what's standing in your way from <clears throat> receiving the reciprocal and balanced energy that you desire, it, what's standing in your way are your own thoughts, your own beliefs, and how it feels like you are obligated to or required to give or provide in a situation that really, when you, when you boil it down, isn't as reciprocal or balanced as you would really want it to be or as I as you want as you would hope it would be hello everyone welcome to morning coffee thank you all so very much for tuning in so this is going to be your general energy reading for your day or for your moment yeah please keep in mind that this is a general reading so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't and this is a timeless reading so just focus more on the message and what it means for you, not necessarily the timing. Time is an illusion and energies are fluid, okay? Anything can happen at any given moment. All right, guys. So um, I hope you're having a good day. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Yes. Uh, so uh, a few things before we get started. One, thank you guys so much for sharing your stories and helping me fine tune a little bit of the messages that are coming through here. I definitely am noticing a shift in this community, this part of the collective. Um, and that shift has moved from really resonating so much with the Twin Flame journey in an external point of view and resonating more with it from an internal point of view. Yeah, we've a lot of us have really been able to balance and integrate our masculine and feminine sides throughout the three years that I've been doing this channel and I really am very grateful for that uh, because that's really been my goal here. I, I mean, you know, in the very beginning when I started this channel, we were doing the typical thing, you know, reading the divine ma masculine, divine feminine energies, uh, looking for or expecting some sort of external change when really the change needed to happen internally all along. and. Um, I did make that shift to focusing internally and it seems like we've all been very successful in terms of balancing and integrating that and I really uh, in that in terms of that I'm speaking to those that have been following me for the longest because we've been working on that for the longest time for those of you that are fairly new to me and you're still resonating with the twin flame journey that's perfect I mean I, I am not I am not casting or throwing any shade at you you're just at a different point and i welcome you wholeheartedly with open arms into this collective because it's my it's my goal here to help us really understand ourselves so that we can move forward in our lives in the best way possible so i highly encourage you to stick around because this is hard work but it's definitely possible okay now with that said um i have been in an energy of feeling called or pulled towards bringing some form of twin flame reading back to YouTube. I have been, I've been doing it over on Patreon for a, 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 for a bit. And then I kind of fell off of it again because I needed to, I needed to disconnect from basically everything for a while so that I could get myself, uh, back to a better state of balance and wholeness and now I'm there and so as a result of that you know I was able to get the monthly readings done which was fun and I'm definitely looking forward to doing them for July as well but with that said part of this transition that I went through and this healing process that I went through that really culminated over the last two months I want to say April and May is really when a lot of it happened and I was able to reset and get back into a flow here Part of that healing process was me getting to the point where I could approach the Twin Flame journey and messages for, t for individuals that resonate with the Twin Flame journey without getting triggered. And so because of that, I am definitely looking to bring Twin Flame readings back to YouTube, most likely on a monthly basis. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out exactly how I want to do that. Um, and while I was reading through the comments yesterday, I was starting to real. I was starting to think maybe I should label it instead of looking at it a twin flame reading. Maybe I should do like a, a divine union reading. But that divine union reading is going to be or would be at least focused on the, your internal union and what's going on in your life and how your internal union may be affected by what's going on in your life or how you can 
uh, draw on the power of your sense of internal union to have a greater, more positive, and maybe even lasting effect on your life. But then also there were a number of people in the comments yesterday that are still talking about resonating with the twin flame journey as it first appears in our lives. So I, I'm kind of, I'm still kind of juggling that um, and trying to figure out exactly how I want to, how I want to focus this monthly session. Any suggestions or whatever it is you guys feel would be best please let me know down in the comments section. I'm gonna take a tally of that and whatever feels like is most needed, I will go with. At, at this point, I'm kind of leaning towards the, the official Twin Flame readings are, are a little more needed because in terms of like divine union or just like the union within, we have a lot of coverage on that and that actually kind of comes through with morning coffee too. So we may be set on that, but you guys let me know. I'd love to, obviously, you know I love to hear from you, and I'm definitely open to your opinion. This this channel is for all of us, okay? So your opinion is important here. Um, okay, so that's one point. Second point, today is an example of how um, it's not always necessary to have a daily dose session. For those of you that are on Patreon, you know that, uh, first of all, I'm looking to bring daily, the Daily Dose officially to Patreon, and it's most likely going to happen after this week. Um, originally, my plan was to, you know, do today's session after today, Wednesday, moving forward. We have it in on Patreon, but today there was really nothing to report. So I may do one more session here for YouTube, and then it's officially moving to, to Patreon. But if you are already on Patreon, then you've seen my post and what I'm and how the, the changes that I'm well the the adjustments, minor adjustments that I'm bringing to Patreon. And in that, I did mention to you that daily dose may not all may not be so daily because there isn't always there aren't always things to discuss. Like today, I was looking through the chart, looking through the aspects, and it really wasn't all that different from yesterday. Um, the one thing that I saw that we could kind of talk about was the fact that later in the day today, the 16th of June, um, the moon is going to be squaring up with Mercury. And with that, you know, a, a lot of your feelings may come into view. We do have the moon in Leo right now, so the focus is on the self and, 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 and um, self-expression. Um, for some of you, the moon squaring up with Mercury tonight could bring some of your emotions into focus. You could have an opportunity to really work with that or work to try and understand that, especially if you're, like I said yesterday, especially if you're going through a situation in which there are some energies that you have to work out with other people. Um, I feel like this would be an internal focus with the moon squaring up with Mercury. Potentially, it could create some more volatility. But that's, that, I mean, that's just something to look out for. It's not anything really all that major, even though a square is a pretty difficult aspect. But that wasn't worth doing a whole video for, right? So that, so, so there we go. So there's the example of sometimes a daily dose just isn't going to be a thing because there really isn't much to talk about, okay? So no daily dose today. But that's all right. There's plenty for us to talk about. Uh, last thing I want to mention is it is Wednesday and I'm thinking of doing happy hour tonight. If you guys are up for a happy hour session, definitely let me know in the description box below. Um, and, uh, we'll see what happens. Um, also what I want to mention is that I am, uh, for my Patreoners today, I'm going to be working on a full moon discussion. We do have the full moon coming in on the 24th of June, that's next week, I believe it's next Wednesday, don't quote me on that, but I know it's on the 24th. Um, it's a full moon in Sagittarius, and so we're gonna, I'm gonna be recording a video today for my Patreoners, uh, discussing that and doing a reading for that. And then I do think I wanna do a reading for the YouTube Collective that most likely is going to be released this weekend. And to be honest with you, I'm thinking for the YouTube Collective in terms of this full moon, I'm thinking of doing a pick a card reading. What do you guys think? Let me know in the, in the comments, yeah? Um, okay, with all that said, I think we're good. Yeah, let's get to the reading. All right, so for today's session, I'm going to be using the Mystical Manga Tarot deck for our main deck, and then clarification is gonna come from the after tarot today. Wait, this is the before. 
This is the before. Where's the after? Oh, the after's there. Okay, hold on a second. I'll be right back. Okay, all better. All right, so uh, Mystical Manga is our main deck today, and then the After Tarot is our clarification. And then, of course, we'll cross the Oracle Bridge when we get there, yeah? Let's get into this, kids, and see what we've got for today's session. Here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, circumstances, places, and circumstances in which we all need it the most. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, let's give this five shuffles, yeah? One. Oh, 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 try that again. One. Two. Three. Four. For morning coffee, M5. All right, y'all. Let's get into this and see what we've got for today. Here we go. What's going on with the collective today? What messages do we have for the collective today? There seems to be a lot of unknown, hidden elements right now because all of the cards that have come out here are face down. Overall energy, you do have the Queen of Pentacles. And I feel like this is your focus right now, whether you're a, a man or a woman, or whether you resonate more with masculine or feminine energy, it doesn't matter. The message right now is about <clears throat> the Queen of Pentacles, your internal focus, how you feel about yourself, how you are providing for yourself, and maybe even how you're providing with others. Now that I am, I'm talking through this, the Six of Pentacles has just popped into my head. Now, I haven't looked at, there are four other cards here that have come out, they're all face down. I haven't looked at those yet, but I'm seeing the Six of Pentacles in my mind right now. Now, the Queen of Pentacles is the type of energy to not, um, not wanting, not want to indulge or or interact in a situation in which it is not reciprocal. And I just feel like right now, many of you are in this energy of understanding what it is you are giving to a, a situation and what it is you are receiving. Again, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman or you find yourself on the masculine or feminine side. It doesn't matter. We're talking about the principles of the Queen of Pentacles and I just feel like there is a lot of thought right now that is being put towards what it is you are giving out and what it is you are receiving in return. Underneath the Queen of Pentacles is the Eight of Swords, and underneath the Eight of Swords, you do have Justice to the Ten of Swords. So, aha, look at that. Justice, the Ten of Swords, and then the Devil. Maybe even, okay, well, and the Devil. Now, this is where you are breaking free, okay? You have the Queen of Pentacles in which it feels like you are thinking about your balance between give and take, the harmonization within your life on a material, financial, maybe even or abundance level. Next, you have the Eight of Swords. This is where I feel like you're, you're, what's coming into focus for you in this energy is how you're feeling trapped, how you're feeling restrained, how you're feeling confined. For some of you, um, what's standing in your way from <clears throat> receiving the reciprocal and balanced energy that you desire, it, what's standing in your way are your own thoughts, your own beliefs, and how it feels like you are obligated to or required to give or provide in a situation that really, when you, when you boil it down, isn't as reciprocal or balanced as you would really want it to be or as, I, as, you, want, as you would hope it would be. 
okay? Followed by that, you do have justice. I do feel like you are starting to come to an understanding of how you can balance the scales and effectively end a really tough cycle, Ten of Swords, and release yourself from some sort of obligation. That feels like the main phrase here or the main point of view in terms of this situation. What are your obligations? Where are you feeling obligated? And what can you do to alleviate that stress in your life? That's what I feel like is really the thought process for you in terms of this reading. So if this is resonating for you so far, that's where I feel like your mind is right now, okay? Let's get into the cards that have fallen out here. Excellent. This is beautiful. This is really, really beautiful. You have the Queen of Swords. You have the Six of Wands. You have the Queen of Wands. And then finally, you have the Six of Swords. So you're definitely moving away, okay? You're, you're in the process of moving away from some things. Now, the Queen of Swords is perfect here. Because first of all, I'll say this. The Queen of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles, in my opinion, are like best friends, all right? Um, because they're very similar in energy. Now, the Queen of Pentacles does contain, <laughs> we'll say, relatively speaking, a heavier dose of compassion than the Queen of Swords does, because the Queen of Swords ain't trying to deal with emotions or feelings at all. She's straight up facts. She's straight up intellectual, okay? Like, like emotions really do not have a place in her realm. The Queen of Pentacles does have, does contain, have a space in her realm for emotions, but she's more of a hard ass, okay? Um, she's definitely not the Queen of Cups, but she's still, she's, the, the Queen of Pentacles is still a loving and nurturing, like, nurturing entity, all right? But here, the Queen of Pentacles is representing your desire to be in a reciprocal and balanced situation. The Queen of Swords is helping you to break free from those chains, is effect, uh, break free from those chains, yes, is effectively helping you cut out and end what is needing, what is toxic, what is codependent, and what is needing to be let go of, what is chaining you, binding you to the situation. Uh, the other thing that I want to say before I move it forward, the Devil and the Eight of Swords are very similar energies in terms of the fact that they represent confinement, but also they represent the fact that you can break yourself free from this, okay? At any point, you could use the eight swords that are surrounding you to cut yourself free. And the devil, even though the devil can represent uh, codependency and confinement, you actually can make the choice to walk away from the devil if you choose to. Not to say that it's easy, but also the devil only has power over you if you allow him to have it right? And the Eight of Swords only confines you if you continue to allow yourself to reside within the mental space in which you find imprisoned. Ultimately, at any moment, you have the power to free yourself, okay? So you're, it looks like you're freeing yourself, you're working on freeing yourself with the Queen of Swords, and that's bringing you a personal victory. Yes, there could be some sort of public recognition that is coming through for you there. But I don't think that's so important to you. It doesn't feel like that's really all that important. It just feels like what's more important is you receiving the personal victory. And that personal victory is showing up in the form of the Queen of Wands. So whatever it is that you are freeing yourself from, excuse me guys, my allergies are starting to flare up now because of this channeling. Good Lord. Um, but whatever it is you're working on freeing yourself from, it's putting you, or it's either putting you in direct alignment with what it is that you want, or this sense of freedom is giving you the opportunity to work on getting into that alignment, getting into that good feeling place so that you can move forward. Okay, all of this is helping you move forward right now. Six of Swords. You're moving away from rough waters and moving towards calmer waters. And those calmer waters feel exactly or feel very much like being in a space where you are free from burdens, from strife, from tomfoolery, from fuckery, from people that are just take, 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 and not really providing anything to the situation or not keeping up their end of the bargain, okay? Let's pause for a second. Okay. I want to go a little bit further with this um, before we start clarifying. So uh, what's next in this, in terms of this situation, please, Spirit? What's next?
Okay, there is a decision that you need to make here. Ah, all right, and now we have the Queen of Cups. We have all four queens coming forward here in this reading. Um, and, turn this up, right, okay. Um, and so this is obviously talking about the feminine side, feminine qualities. It does, again, you, you could be a man and be working on your feminine side, or you could be a woman and working on your feminine side, okay? But this is, but since we have all four queens showing up in this reading, this to me is empress level energy. And I feel like there is a strong desire, which ultimately is leading to a development of well-rounded divine feminine qualities. I definitely feel like in this energy, you or whomever is resonating with this reading are working on pulling all parts of the feminine, okay, which in the tarot is represented by the queen of, by all the queens in of all the suits, so queen of swords, wands, cups, and pentacles. I feel like you're focusing on using every bit of that energy to 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 round out your life right now. Okay, so but there is an op there there is an opportunity that's coming forward for you. You do have the Ace of Pentacles here, but I do feel like you are creating this opportunity. But there is a choice that you need to make. Okay, and that choice is now based on your true feelings. Queen of Pentacles is at I'm sorry, Queen of Cups is at the bottom of the deck. Your true feelings and placing boundaries. Okay, the Queen of Cups. Uh, the lesson in the Queen of Cups is all about boundaries, right? Emotional boundaries. If she's if she's reversed, if she's not well aspected, she tends to have shit for boundaries. Like she often can find herself in a situation in which you know she's constantly giving to people and no one's returning the favor, and she's just like, "Well, this is fine," but no. This isn't fine. That's not fine. And that's kind of what the Queen of Pentacles was saying in the beginning. We've got to put boundaries in place. We've got to have a structure here so that I'm I'm doing what I feel I need to do to provide to others while also receiving, uh, well, also receiving what I need, but also receiving the the honor of uh, the honor in the fulfillment of the. Um, Gosh, the fulfillment of keeping up, someone else keeping up their end of the bargain, okay? Three more cards here. All of them are face down. There we go. Well, there's the Six of Pentacles. Like I said, I was seeing the Six of Pentacles in the beginning of, this, of the reading. We also have that now with the Three of Wands and the Four of Wands. <laughs> Okay, union energies with the four of wands here. That's beautiful. And this, uh, we are going a little bit backwards because obviously the three comes before the four. But what I'm feeling like here is there is a, a, a greater sense of harmonized union that's coming through that's at play for you here with this four of wands energy. The four of wands is representing your sense of inner union. And thus, that's leading you forward on your path, the three of wands. Now, we do have the two, the three, and the four of wands. Thankfully, we don't have the Five of Wands, which is great, to, and that actually is very important because I feel like there is, there, in terms of your situation right now, there really isn't a sense of inner conflict, which is what the Five of Wands would represent. It's like you're 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 skipping over that that inner conflict here because all of these feminine qualities, the Queen of Pentacles, Wands, Swords, and Cups, are all kind of coming together, and thus you're skipping over that Five of Wands internal conflict and heading straight for the Six, which is uh, a representation of a uh, victory here for yourself. Okay, so. I definitely feel like because of this sense of inner union that is coming online for you that you seem to be integrating with at this time, um, that is causing you to question your reci the reciprocity in your life, the balance between give and take in your life. And because of that question, now you are looking at how you're moving forward in your path, the three of wands, and are trying to decide what it is you want to put in place or what it is you want to create for yourself. What new opportunity do you want to develop for yourself? And then for those of you, for others of you, if it doesn't necessar necessarily resonate in that sense, it's just what environment do you want to create for yourself that's going to allow an offer of true reciprocity to come into your life? 
the Ace of Pentacles, okay? This is really beautiful, you guys. I like this a lot. I really, really like this a lot. Um, so, yeah, let's, uh, let's move forward here. Let's get to some, well, actually, I want to pull, I want to pull one more card, one more card for this spread, and then we'll get into the clarification. One more card to, to round out or to close up this part of the reading, please, Spirit. Just one more card. Interesting. Okay, we're back to the devil at the bottom of the deck. And the last card that's come out here is the Three of Swords. And what this is saying to me here is you guys are finally starting to recognize uh, the heartbreak, how things are hurting you. And I've just heard specifically how you may have been deceived, but quite frankly, it's how you may be deceiving yourself. And that's where we, we, we come full circle back round to the Queen of Pentacles. How you may be deceiving yourself in terms of circumstances or situations or interpersonal relationships that are not balanced and reciprocal. And in the past, you've been in this Queen of Pentacles energy, but not in a, in a, in a positive aspect. Uh, the Queen of Pentacles in terms of constantly providing and giving, feeling like you have to provide and give, and also in some way feeling like you're not giving enough or it's just not enough. And so instead of pulling back and saying, well, how is this situation imbalanced? In the past, you were just, you were like, all right, well, let me just go harder. Let me just do more. And it's like, mm, no, no, that's, that's toxic codependency here. And there you go. I, and again, underneath the, uh, the devil, we're circling back to the Queen of Pentacles. But then underneath the Queen of Pentacles, at this point, we do have the Ten of Swords again, back to justice, okay? That you're realizing how you have been, how this you've just been taken advantage of or misused or your power has been usurped. You're finally starting to see it. You're finally starting to see the pain. You're finally starting to see the wounding for what it truly is. And that's bringing you to a place where you can put greater boundaries in place. Excellent. Let's get some clarification then. Five shuffles. One. Union energies. I just heard that very strongly. Union energies. This is two. And this could very well be uh, connected to what we were talking about in our last morning coffee session in which it was titled... Um, a masculine energy is stepping up. This absolutely could be an influence of your internal masculine energy saying, okay, it's time to, it's time to protect yourself. It's time to start putting, placing some real true boundaries. Yeah, this is three. Or well, whatever. This is four. And this is five. The Six of Cups just wanted to show itself, so this has to do a lot with the past. And the first thing that I want to, um, first thing, sorry guys, first thing that I want to clarify is this Queen of Swords here. All right, so what does the Queen of Swords have to say for you? Because the Queen of Swords is the element of, to you, that's really making, putting, um, uh, making the cuts, okay? All, uh, you know, all four, it's like all four queens within you are having a council meeting and they're all putting their thoughts and their feelings on the table, their point of view, their perspective on the table. It's the queen of swords that is tasked with following through with what's right. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. All right. She's the best one to do it. So what does the queen of swords have to say in this situation? She says it's over, the world. It's time to close up, wrap up these cycles here. We have that with the Eight of Pentacles and the Ten of Pentacles. You've been working very hard. You've been working quite diligently. 
And it's almost as if your reward for the hard work that you've been doing with the Eight of Pentacles is for her to come through and say, okay, now we can finish this out. Now let's wrap this up. It's time to finally be done because you find you, uh, I don't really like saying it this way, but in some cases, the message is clear. You finally learned the lesson, Ten of Pentacles. All the hard work is paying off. And, 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 and this might seem weird, <laughs> even it's been, it seems a little weird as I'm saying it, it maybe even seems trivial, but your reward here is for the situation to finally be closed down. The Queen of Swords is your reward here because things are finally coming to the end. And would you look at that? Underneath the world here is the King of Swords now. There's that sense of masculine energy coming through because you're in a position to now see things as clearly as they truly are. See them for what they are. Because you have reached this sense of balance and harmony and union within underneath the King of Swords is temperance and there's a sense of uh, sovereignty, Nine of Pentacles. You're no longer bound by what other people have to say. You're finally in a situation in which you are sovereign. You stand on your own, you think for yourself, okay? You're self-sufficient. And thus, that is allowing you to move forward from what causes you to grieve. Six of Swords to the Five of Cups to death. And now we have the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Swords showing up again. This is a balance between heart and mind. Emotion, feelings, compassion, intuition, empathy. Okay, that is a very important part of you. Don't let that go. And don't let the emergence of the Queen of Swords tell you or... or push you towards denying your true feelings. It's your true feelings that is helping the queen, provide the queen of swords with an understanding of where boundaries need to be placed. Okay. This is excellent. This is so excellent. Uh, next, what do we want to clarify here? Um, I, I, I kind of want to clarify this. Yeah, we're going to clarify the ace of pentacles first. And then I want to talk and then I want to talk about the three of swords. Maybe do the three of swords first then. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about the three of swords first, okay? What's this three of swords, please, spirit? For the collective. What's the three of swords. Woo! Uh-oh. Ah, would you look at that? Yep. Anything else for the Three of Swords? Okay, just one card. Oh my God, this is perfect. Okay, so uh, something that I mentioned in the comments, or not that I noticed was mentioned a lot in the, uh, uh, not a lot, but a few times in the comments yesterday was the fact that with this energy of, you know, your inner masculine energies coming forward, coming online and, and influencing you, to put greater boundaries into place, influencing you to protect yourself, to find this sense of protection within, um, has a lot to do with the experiences that you had with external masculine energies. How you were not fit, felt, how you were taken advantage of, how you were used and abused, how you felt like you were not safe, how you literally were not protected, okay? The Three of Swords energy is directly connected to the counterpart to the Queen of Pentacles. Unfortunately though, he's in reverse, the King of Pentacles, okay? So this is a recognition for you, at least from a feminine point of view. This is a recognition for you of how certain individuals, you wanna call them divine masculines, go ahead. I did hear that in my head. Um, and just because someone may be at a low vibrational point in their in any given moment on their journey, that doesn't mean that, that they're any less divine. Everything is divine, okay? Everything. Because everything comes from source. Everything comes from the divine. So everything has a sense of divinity within it. That is something that we need to understand. However, that does not mean that we get to allow them to run all over us, run amok. Everybody has, a, has their free will, okay? And what is coming through here is you are recognizing at the bottom of the deck, you do have the hanged man. You are seeing that you have the change in perspective to say to yourself, if someone is in this King of Pentacles energy and I'm in the Queen of Pentacles, just because they're in that energy doesn't mean that they're necessarily doing the right thing. They're, they're doing right by this. They are honoring this. They are honoring me. 
And so it comes down to a point of view of you're either positively aspected as the king of pentacles or you're negatively aspected as the king of pentacles. You're either in the lover's energy, which is a balance and harmony and harmony between masculine and feminine, or you're in the devil energy, which is the exact, which is a mirror image of the lovers. Okay. There is a release of this. There is letting go of these toxic masculine energies, toxic masculine situations in your life, whether that you, whether you are expressing that from within or you're experiencing that in the external. I will say that if you, if you were or you found yourself or do find yourself in a position where you are aligning with individuals that are actually reversed, actually negatively aspected, then you need to understand that there is a part of you that is being mirrored in that individual, okay? Whether that be your own tendencies or whether that be thoughts and beliefs that are a product of damage, okay? Three of Swords, you have to recognize that there is a part of you that is being reflected within that person in this circumstance, but it's all so that you can gain the change in perspective. The Hanged Man, the Four of Swords, and the Six of Cups. Change in perspective, understanding, meditate on this, on these past circumstances. That's going to help you gain a change in perspective. This is all in terms of harmonizing your feminine energy, working on that, that, that empress, that queen of all queens, the combination of all four queens in one which is bringing you reciprocity, six of pentacles. This is getting you in alignment, moving you forward, the chariot, okay? There is definitely an energy of greater alignment here for you that is moving you forward. It, it, in, uh, quite frankly, it's moving you forward in an, at an accelerated pace, okay? Okay, now I wanna clarify this ace of pentacles here. Please clarify the ace of pentacles. What is the ace of pentacles for the collective, please, spirit? Beautiful, beautiful, there's the Six of Swords again. This is the third time the Six of Swords has shown up here, okay? So this is all about moving on, cutting yourself free, relieving yourself from the tough situations, the difficult circumstances. The Ace of Pentacles is clarified by the Star and the Knight of Wands. And what I heard with this, when this came out, was getting on with your mission getting on with your light work, getting on with what drives you, what fuels you, what moves you, moving forward towards your dreams, your goals, and leaving the past behind. There is a sense here of, of saying to yourself or like a narrative in, in that I'm picking up on that says, well, if I'm not getting what it is I want, need, and deserve from you or from this situation, then I'm going to cut my losses and I'm gonna move forward and I'm gonna go somewhere where I can get that. Underneath the Six of Swords is the Nine of Pentacles and Temperance and the King of Swords, again, wrapping us all the way around, coming full circle to the world. This is definitely a representation of you having found a sense of sovereignty or you working on getting a sense of sovereignty with the Nine of Pentacles, employing your masculine and feminine side. So it's not just about being compassionate and, and open-hearted and understanding. Somebody did mention in the comments yesterday, Bobby, it was you. Bobby was saying how um, in terms of this, she feels like she's in a twin flame uh, 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 situation with someone and her feminine side is all compassionate and loving and understanding. And it's like, oh my God, this all makes sense. But then her masculine side is pissed off. And I was like, you damn right, he should be pissed off. Let him be. Allow your feminine side to be compassionate and understanding and unconditionally loving. Allow your masculine side to be unconditionally loving too, but recognize that he does that from a different point of view. If your masculine side is pissed off because he's, you're recognizing that something in the external world or in a relationship is not balanced, then allow him to come forward and say, enough is enough. We can't allow this to happen. I understand you have all these feelings in terms of this person, but how is this person actually treating you? How are these circumstances actually treating you? What are the truths? What are the truths? What, is, what are the facts of the situation? Facts are the facts. 
You can have all the love in the world for someone, but if they're treating you like garbage, <laughs> you got to nip that shit in the bud. You got to end that. And that's where we have that, this harmony, this balance, this integration, this union within yourself that is allowing you to be a sovereign being and saying, you know what? It's time for me to go. And, and this is very much Five of Swords to the Six of Swords energy. Five of Swords is... Um, yeah, the Five of Swords is a lose-lose situation, right? It's, it's rough, rough and tumble. Everyone's out for themselves. Every man, woman, and child out for themselves. Uh, it's self-sabotage and all that. But it's also choosing your battles, picking your battles wisely, and knowing when to put your sword down and just walk away just move away. And it may seem like um, <clears throat> some people may look at you and call you a coward. That's some bullshit. Because you know deep down within this is actually a victory because you're no longer fighting for something that was, that was toxic and destructive to begin with. Don't let other people judge you on that. You have a right to move away from things that only work to destroy. Things that are just destructive. That's the Six of Swords energy, okay? Excellent. Let's close out this reading. Interesting. I am being called to one of my uh, Abraham Hicks decks. What is this? The teachings of Abraham. Yeah. But the well-being cards. Okay. All right. Let's give this five shuffles then, guys. One. Two, three, I definitely encourage you guys to let me know in the comments how this is resonating with you. Yeah, this is four. Thank you so much. It, you guys, it really does help me fine tune these channelings that are coming through. Yeah, so please keep the comments coming. This is five. All right, closing oracle guidance, please. Spirit, in terms of this reading here. Exactly, exactly. All right, we got two cards here. The first one says, my happiness is my greatest gift to others. On the back of the card, it says, Seek, uh, selfishly seek joy because your joy is the greatest gift you can give to anyone. Unless you are in joy, you have nothing to give anyway. And that's perfect. That is Queen of Pentacles energy to a T. 100%. Second card we have here is first I seek joy and all else follows. Back of the card says, since, you are, since your feeling of joy is your indication of your connection with your source, once you have achieved joy, you have achieved connection with your source. And, all, and under these circumstances, all that is good flows. And this is an absolutely what I feel like your inner masculine energy is helping you to achieve because he's bringing the perspective in to finally set some real hard and strong boundaries okay i love this for you guys i love this for us so there you have it thank you guys so much for tuning in i hope this was helpful for you i love you all so very much i hope you have a fantastic day and i look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning yeah take care Mwah!